wanted to spend a little bit of time telling you what GAP's been up to. So about uh, the beginning of, of 2021, GAP Inc. Uh, took a step back and created the Growth Office. So I lead strategy and operations for the Growth Office. And the Growth Office was charged with growing revenue for GAP Inc. And one of the first things that we did when we faced that challenge was saying we can grow in the consumer marketplace or we can grow and step into a different part of the marketplace. And that's where we wanted to focus our efforts first. So we really looked at what was, what was going on in the world? Where were there opportunities in the world? And we took that and we looked at where we had capabilities and assets within our infrastructure that we could leverage to bring out there into the marketplace. And um, you know, today our brands have, you know, have an infrastructure that we rely on for our own brands, where we have tons of capability around product creation, around the supply chain, and around reaching customers and engaging with customers through our loyalty program. So in taking a look at that, we challenged ourselves with stepping into the B2B marketplace and offering up some services to other brands to tap into what we've created for our brands and opening that up for others. In doing so, we looked at where we wanted to start first. And we, we targeted in on a few separate areas that we have stepped into in this past year. So the first place we looked at was um, our customer file. We have a customer, a huge customer file, a loyalty program, and um, we stood up about a year ago the GPS media business for us, which over the past year, we've been continuing to build out capabilities and will be stepping into that more in this next year. The second thing that we looked into is um, our apparel cap capabilities. As we have um, our own brands, we do design and sourcing for our own brands, and we wanted to step into also the B2B space as well. And then the final place, which I'm going to be spending most of the time speaking with Randall about, is our GPS services business, where we opened up our business operations to other brands. I'm going to quickly talk about our GPS media business. So GPS media allows companies to connect to our Gap Inc. purpose-led brands and our customers through those brands in an elevated experience that is, that is able to connect to the customers directly. In the past year, like I said, we have set up capabilities and built out products to offer in this space, and we'll continue to be doing that over this next year as we step to target audiences um, and offer those services up. GPS Apparel is our step into the B2B marketplace for, for apparel. So there's two different pieces to this business. The first piece is our promotional, promotional apparel business, where we are partnering with suppliers and with distributors to take our known products and offer them up into the promotional space where companies can use these goods for events and, and also for businesses. The place where I'm more excited, even more excited about, is our uniform business. So we are partnering with brands across various industries to be able to meet their uniform program needs. The way in which we're doing this is very much with a consumer-facing mindset. So we are partnering with brands who, and trying to understand what they want to convey their brand message to be and what they want to be able to show their employees in. And we're spending time with those brands at the start to understand what their needs are. But we're also then taking our capabilities from our, our um, own brands and reaching out to their employees in a way to meet their employee needs. So we're bringing our consumer insights into the B2B space and into the uniform space. So we are able to spend time with the employees to understand how they want to feel, how they want to show up. And we're taking that and marrying that with the needs of the brands, where we are saying, how do you want to show up as a brand? How do your employees want to, how do, what do they need to perform? What do they, how do they want to feel as they're doing their job on a day-to-day -day basis? And we're taking those two things and marrying them together to be able to create a uniform program that is a much more employee-centric approach to uniforms. Um, we then take that through our supply chain, creating the goods, delivering the goods to the employees. And at the end of that piece, we have, um, again, an employee experience that is very consumer focused as well. So rather than a traditional uniform ordering procurement site, we have an engaging customer experience with those employees where they're able to 
buy their uniforms and engage back with their company and with us to be able to inform the future needs of the uniform program. So that's a business that we took a lot of our capabilities that what we had for our own brands and brought it to the marketplace in a different way and were able to tap into um, our capabilities and bring it into this uniform space in a way that's different than is being done today. We have some exciting partnerships that we're gonna be starting to talk about in 2023 around this business. And then our newest business is our GPS services business. So GPS services is really tapping into our supply chain solutions that we leverage for our own brands and making them available to brands of various sizes. So you know, small brands starting up all the way up to billion dollar brands the size of ours is something that we can bring into our capabilities and be, open up our capabilities to them. In the space, we start, we're starting right now in the logistics and the fulfillment space. So from inbound transportation through to our distribution and fulfillment centers, uh, and then offering the services to, out to customers and bringing returns in. And we're doing this both in the D2C space, in the wholesale space, and in um, the, if brands are opening up stores, we have the capabilities to service those needs too. So a lot of what we're doing today uh, for our own brands, we are now able to open up to others. So. Yeah, All right. up, brands, we well, can chat more about it. I got a lot of stuff to it. ask you. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, was a, that was a great introduction, and you know I'm excited about yes, this. Yes. Okay. And, and it, it just hit me, it, like a way to kind of summarize the, the journey that, that Gab's been on, for your entire history, which is now 50, 50 years, plus years, 50, yeah. 50 years, you're a B2C company. Yes. And at some point in the past couple of years, somebody gets an insight and says, wait a minute, there's a whole B2B thing that we can get into. What was the aha? Because that yeah. is very unusual. Yeah, so at, at, like I said, at this, in the beginning of 2021 was when we really took stock and said, we want to grow. We want to, and and we know that we need to diversify. We had just been through the first year of COVID. We knew that the consumer market place is a, a roller coaster ride, um, even continued to today. And at that point in time, we really wanted to understand how can we play, how can we leverage our assets, and where do we have the right to play to be able to step into the B two B space? And, and we looked at other Fortune five hundred companies, and most companies that were growing had that component of both B2B and B2C. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were missing that largely from a B2B standpoint. Do you, I mean, this gets a, a little bit into the weeds, but I have to ask as a, as a former uh, senior exec at a big consulting firm, yeah. what kind of processes did you go through internally yeah. to, uh, to hit that strategy? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Were you using outside consultants? Did you uh, task one person internally to run the project? How did yeah, we, it work? we took a few different angles at it. So we had internal resources look mm -hmm. at it um, and then completely separately brought in external resources and, and did an exercise of what does the, mar the marketplace look like? Where are there opportunities in the marketplace? Put a side gap. Where are there market opportunities where we can where we can step into, where, you know, what are GAP's capabilities? Where, where do we have the right to play? Where will customers go with us? And we're talking about B2B today, but coming out of that work, point us in some adjacencies for brands that we're stepping into as well. Um, but, you know, specifically around this B2B place, we, we tried to triangulate a few different things mm -hmm. with both internal and external resources it's, supporting it's, us. So, IAB, we were talking uh, yeah. before, um, you know, IAB research now going back six, seven years on the direct brand economy, you know, we ended up working with Dun & Bradstreet, and I think we identified 5,000 companies that had come into existence just within that seven-year period uh, to serve uh, uh, we call them direct brands rather than D2C because it wasn't just about delivery to the home. A lot of larger brands, especially a lot of larger retailers, kind of dismissed it. They didn't think that that was going to amount to anything or else it was just another version of a direct mail business. You saw something larger there. Yes. Why, what overcame what I have to imagine uh, would have been skepticism about, oh, all these 
tiny little companies. There's not going to be a business for us there. What overcame that skepticism? Yeah, I mean, I think it was, I mean, it's it's really like you have to look at the facts of where market, where the market is going and where consumers are going and consumers are going in that direction um, and testing out new things with, you know, all of the social things going around these days. So we had to, you know, it's it's either play or, or move out of the way of mm -hmm. them. And that's where we said, again, looking internally, we have so many capabilities that we have within our own brands, how do we play in that marketplace in a different way? So you have uh, your three main brands, three, four, four main four, Gap brands, yes. right? four main uh, yep. Gap brands. We, sh we can list them. Yep. Gap, Gap Kids? Is there, no, that, Gap, that's still Gap. Gap, Banana, Old Navy, Old Navy Banana, Republic, Banana Republic, and Athleta. Okay, Athleta. Yeah. It, it's the, I always yep. forget about Athleta. Mm -hmm. it's a, so I would imagine, this is a question, but it's coming in the form of a statement. I would imagine that taking a set of services that have been entirely internally directed and saying, guess what, folks? We're going to wave a wand, and tomorrow you're going to have external customers as well. That's a big shock to the system. It, it definitely is. It definitely is. What were the hardest parts so, of yeah, that? I mean, um, so, yeah, so, I mean, what was easy was the fact that we do have these, this platform of capabilities. So the way that we're structured internally is we have our supply chain capabilities, our digital capabilities, and have that expertise centralized in servicing our brands. So that was the easiest, that was the easiest part to sort of extend to other brands. Where and, we, and, that's a, and that's a shared services shared structure service, internally. Okay. Yeah, shared service structure internally that we, that we service the brands as customers today. So that was the easy part of it. The new part for us is we don't have a sales force. We don't have a customer success team. You know, just understanding how to work with other brands and customers. And that's where, you know, we formed this separate business unit uh, within Gapping to be able to bring those experts from the outside, bring those resources from the outside to tap into our our platform of capabilities and, and start to extend those. How did you when, you, when you first started taking it to market, which is not that long no. ago, not that long ago, <laughs> yeah. um, what, what's the first stop? I, it, it's all, yeah. I, I know it's, it's almost like a stupid question, but I'm like wondering how you build a new thing on top of a foundation that's yeah. been there for a long time. Yeah, I mean, a lot of what we've done so far is really, it's mostly been referrals at this point of people internally, talk, you know, who do you know? How do you, how can we start? How can we start learning, right? Because we, we didn't want to jump into this and not have learning. So we've sort of stepped into it um, by, by talking to other brands out there and other customers. And really, it, it, th that's what it's been this far. And, um, and now, as we've gotten through the first year of standing up and learning, now we're starting to talk more publicly, like in places mm -hmm. like this, to be able to start speaking about it and, and making it aware and, and learning more. So we're really excited. We're a, a startup in a big company. So fun, um, fun craziness of the startup, but also the, ro the robust support of a big company behind us. To be what, able to stand it, it up. It, it, uh, American Eagle has also gone, gone into uh, managed services, but they made, they did it by acquisition. Yes. Uh, they bought quiet, quiet, quiet logistics. logistics. Yes. Um, uh, what, what made uh, Gap Inc. decide to build rather than buy? It was a lot of it was just the fact that we had this huge infrastructure mm -hmm. here. So in our in our logistics and fulfillment network, we have six dis distribution campuses with fourteen actual distribution and fulfillment centers operating there. And over the past five or so years, we've invested significantly into automation in those distribution centers and fulfillment centers, and we've been able to through that gain more space and storage and capacity to process more. Um, so we had a lot of the foundation to be able to offer up to to other brands. Is, is it, I'm just trying to figure out how to phrase this. If you look out at the world that has come into existence over the past 20 years, I'm thinking just purely about the uh, kind of the retail ecosystem. Uh, you can't help but look out and look at Amazon mm -hmm. and say. Oh my God! Look at what they did. Well, we were we were sticking to our own knitting. Yeah. Look what they yeah. did. How much of looking at Amazon and some of this physically yeah. looking at those giant yeah. cam distribution yeah. campuses? Yeah. How much of this was about looking at Amazon and saying, 
if we don't want to be Amazon ourselves, we have to get into their business yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, like we've, like I said, we've done so much investment in, into our supply chain that we did feel like we had a product out there that um, that a, that not many others have, save for Amazon, right? So Amazon is, you know, has their AWS um, and has their s supply chain services that they offer up, and we felt like we could do it in a way that was more unique to us, um, really focusing on brands and brand growth. Um, you know, our platform of services not only have the sort of standard supply chain capabilities, but we also have a robust data science team that we are able to tap into and offer up to brands. So we felt like there's there's a, so much that we have to offer. Yes, we have. But I'm going to put words space. in your mouth now, yeah. so so uh, so I'm not sure you can say this. But is part of it say, hey, folks, if you want to go with Amazon, you're going to risk being commoditized. We are the anti-commoditization yes. company. Yes, we are. A, we are a, a a company of brands. Right. We know we know customers, we know brands, we know how to grow them, and that's what we have to offer versus just putting you through the machine. I mean, yeah. in a way, the company that took the ultimate commodity, which is blue jeans, yeah. and turned them into one of the most highly branded uh, 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 products on earth. Yeah. So yeah, I, I know. Looking, it, it, when you go and you're seeking customers mm -hmm. among smaller brands, yeah. do you have Floors, it, what, what's too small and what's yeah. too large? Yeah, I mean, right now, again, we're a new startup. We're learning from customers. So we are open to working with customers of various sizes. I think um, where we can offer tremendous value is when brands are at different points in their, different inflection points in their growth. So if you're making the choice of where do I go? I've been doing this myself, sort of small scale. Like we can be that first step into a partnership there. Or, you know, when you've grown and scaled your brand and you're looking to say, do I, do I divide my inventory? Do I go into stores? That's another like decision point that we feel like we can help with. And again, we have the capabilities to service large brands as well, sizes of our own. But um, I think it's really in those inflection points where we can offer a lot of value there. So one of the themes this year, and uh, you know, Chris uh, brutally presented in the research earlier today, uh, is, is hybrid commerce, H-commerce. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the idea that you know, if you really want to grow beyond a certain point, you can't remain just digital. You have to start thinking about that merger of physical and digital. And it's a merger more than it is omni. Yes. It's, it's really about being together. Um, are you, this sounds like something that is one of your core services uh, based on what, I'm just yes, based on yes, what you're saying. Yes, yeah, I mean, uh, we, you Like know, getting, getting digital brands into, into, into phys physical spaces, yeah. When we, um, when we purchased Athleta, I think it was in 2008, 2009, Athleta was um, largely a you know, catalog business. And then we, we took them and grew their digital space and grew them into stores. And now we're getting them, you know, Athleta, you can buy Athleta at REI these days too. So we've sort of expanded that. And we think that, you know, we took them from a very small brand to a, a billion plus dollar band, brand at this point. So, um, you know, think we have the ability to, to help connect the dots for those smaller brands looking for that growth. So I looked at the schematic that you laid out, mm -hmm. uh, which was the apparel. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I would almost order it a little yeah. differently. I, I see apparel and, you know, followed by services, yeah. followed by media. Yeah. I look at that and I say, oh, this is that same kind of end to end yeah. from sourcing to manufacturing to logistics, distribution, all the way through to marketing the and customer, fulfillment yeah. at the back end. Yeah. So you're kind of like a an, a, a, an Amazon. I mean, in, in that I, sense that you can yes. one stop shop yes. your way we into can, this. Yes, we can. You know, we can connect through the whole the whole retail the whole end to end value chain. So who? Who is your competition here? Is it a Shopify? Is it an Amazon? Or are they partners? So, I, uh, so yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, there's definitely partnerships we're looking to form as we're in this space. I think, you know, there's traditional 3PLs that are our competition. There's sort of the smaller 3PLs that are stepping into this space in the services area uh, that is our competition. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's our competition in that space, for sure. I, as you know, I can go on, yeah. you know, in supply chain geek 
geekdom for yeah. hours and hours, and I can't because we, we have to move on. We have other exciting things. So, Larissa, I just want to thank you for this. Yeah. This is a really, really innovative uh, uh, initiative on the part of GAP, and I thank you for being here. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks.